A vast swaths, Ranger Patrick, again continuing our discussion about Boston during the golden age of piracy, and some of the most notorious pirates of the age. Second up in our rogues gallery was probably the era's most successful pirate captain, Black Sam Bellamy. Bellamy began his nautical career as a ship's boy during the War of the Spanish Succession. At war's end, now an experienced sailor, he traveled to Massachusetts, living in Boston from 1713 to 1715. In 1715, he allegedly fell in love with a girl from Cape Cod, whom he impregnated. But like so many other veterans of the war, he had little wealth to make a respectable suitor. The answer to his money problems seemed to come when the Spanish treasure fleet departed Cuba in July 1715 and ran into a hurricane off the coast of Florida. Eleven of the twelve ships were lost, a thousand sailors drowned, and seven million pesos worth of valuables, especially silver, was scattered across relatively shallow water that any strong swimmer could dive. Immediately, the area swarmed with fortune hunters, including Bellamy. Nevertheless, very few were able to get their hands on this vast lost fortune. Bellamy instead fell under the direction of Benjamin Hornigold, an English privateer, who persisted in seizing Spanish prizes despite peace in Europe. Bellamy and Hornigold's mate, Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, eventually parted ways with Hornigold, who was unwilling to attack British ships. Bellamy, however, was prepared to declare war against all nations. I am a free prince, he said, and I have as much authority to make war on the world as he who has a hundred sail of ships at sea. Hornigold's crew voted to depose him as captain and elected Bellamy instead. This democratic feature was unique in the nautical world to pirate crews. They could elect or depose a captain based on a popular vote under the regulations put forth by the ship's articles, which all crew members had to agree to. Articles on pirate ships generally dictated that every man had an equal vote and should have equal access to food and drink. Crew members were authorized one share of any prize seized, while at most a captain could claim only two shares. Weapons had to be kept in good working order, fights were only authorized on shore, no gambling was allowed, and funds were set aside for injuries or wounds received in battle. Marooning was punishment for desertion or fraud, but there was no evidence that anyone was ever made to walk the plank. Bellamy quickly became a very successful pirate captain, earning the nickname Black, not for any cruelty, indeed there was no evidence he ever harmed a captive, but for his long black coats. Bellamy, like many pirate captains, used intimidation to coerce ships into surrendering rather than putting up a fight. Part of this involved flying a Jolly Roger, a name popular with English pirates for the black and white designs of their flags, which often featured shared death's head motifs. Ironically, the origin of the name probably originated in the red, not black, flags of French buccaneers, called Jolie Rouge, or Pretty Red. Bellamy himself utilized a skull with cross bones we recognize today as a generic pirate flag, such as the one behind me. Bellamy rose to the height of his power after he captured the Wita Galley, a slave ship. He made this the flagship of a small fleet of vessels over which he was elected Commodore. In the period of one year, he captured 53 ships, seizing the equivalent today of $142 million. Bellamy styled himself as a Robin Hood of the seas, justifying his actions by stating, they vilify us, the scoundrels do, there is only this difference. They rob the poor under cover of law. We plunder the rich under the protection of our own courage. In 1717, Bellamy headed back to Cape Cod, but the two ships under his command, the Wita Galley and the Marianne, were wrecked in a violent April storm only a few hundred yards offshore from Wellfleet, Massachusetts. Only two men of the 145-member crew of the Wita Galley and seven men of the Marianne survived. Bellamy was not among them. At the time of his death, Bellamy was only 28. The nine survivors were captured and tried in Boston, the old state house for piracy. Six were sentenced to death. 
two men proved they had been unwillingly pressed into service. While the many pirates were embittered due to their own impressment into the Navy, they inflicted the same fate on others. A third individual, a Mosquito Indian, was sold as a slave to John Quincy, the grandfather of John Quincy Adams. Despite threats by Blackbeard to destroy all New England shipping, the other six were executed near the Charles River Ferry in Charlestown on November 15, 1717. Changes in Admiralty law allowed for pirates to be executed in Boston as early as 1704, starting with the pirate John Quelch. Famous minister Cotton Mather, who often preached about piracy in Boston's original North Church and who rarely missed an execution, pronounced in his written account of the final hours of the condemned, Behold the end of piracy. Blackbeard himself would come to an end befitting of his living legend status only a few days later. Thriving under the protection of Charles Eden, rural governor of North Carolina, he was attacked by British sailors dispatched from Virginia. He died fighting off Ocracoke Island on November 22, 1717, allegedly shot no less than five times and receiving up to 20 sword wounds. He was decapitated and his head brought back to Virginia as a spoil of battle. Centuries later, in 1984, the wreck of the Weta Galley was discovered. Much of Bellamy's treasure, as well as cannons, weapons, and the ship's bell were recovered and are now on public display. Despite the deaths of Bellamy and Blackbeard in 1717 and the convictions of Cotton Mather, the golden age of piracy was far from over. Indeed, one of its greatest villains was about to take the helm.